Today on CPTV, we'll take a look at several of the key propositions on the November ballot. Cal Poly students react to the final presidential debate. And hundreds of Cal Poly students volunteer locally for a National Day of Service. Live from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, I'm Armando Garcia. And I'm Christina Favuzzi. You're watching CPTV. A recent poll shows support for Governor Brown's tax initiative, but Proposition 30 has dropped less than 50% among likely voters. The poll was released yesterday by the Public Policy Institute of California. The proposition fell four points in the last month. 48% of likely voters now say they will vote yes on the measure, while 44% are opposed. As for Governor Brown, his approval rating is about the same as it was two years ago, just above 40%. However, his disapproval rating has grown from 20% to 43%. CPTV's Ed Zucchelli has more about how professors and students are getting ready for potential cuts at Cuesta College. Teachers and professors at Cuesta College are getting ready for the possibility of more budget cuts. Cuesta is facing the possibility of 29 programs being cut on campus if Proposition 30 does not pass. If it does pass, it is likely they will see some programs go away anyways. You know, what are we going to be in the future? Is that all we're going to, Cuesta College is going to be? You're going to have composition and basic math? Is that all you want? One of the programs on the list to be cut is the Broadcast Communications Department at Cuesta. Well, when I heard that it, it might be cut, I was very shocked, um, especially still being in the program and counting on that as my major. A panel of faculty, staff, Administrators and a student will make a recommendation to Cuesta College President Gil Stork as to what will be on the chopping block in November. The Board of Trustees will receive the final recommendation from Stork on December 12th. Some programs could be cut as early as the spring 2013 semester. The other thing that they said, the programs could be saved as long as the community considers them valuable. Cuesta College could lose over $2.8 million dollars if Prop 30 doesn't pass. That's on top of the $3 million cut the college has made already. I would very much like to say that I was able to get a broadcasting degree from Cuesta College. Ed Zucchelli, CPTV. Cuesta College President Gil Stork and Cal Poly President Jeffrey Armstrong wrote an editorial in the Tribune urging a yes vote on Proposition 30. Prop 40, one of the more complicated props on this ballot this year, is what is known as an orphan measure, meaning that people who sponsored the bill have now abandoned it. Prop 40 was initially proposed by the California Republican Party in order to redo the Senate districts drawn last year by the California Citizens Redistricting Commission. However, the state Supreme Court ordered state election officials to use the new districts in January, which makes the proposition ineffective. Nevertheless, the prop remains on the ballot. A yes vote means the district boundaries certified by the commission will continue to be used, while a no vote means that the Supreme Court will appoint special masters to determine new state senate district boundaries. Proposition 35 aims to crack down on sex trafficking in California. The bill imposes harsher penalties for sex traffickers, including longer prison sentences, increased fines, and forcing convicted sex traffickers to register as sex offenders. Opponents of the bill argue that it will come as an extreme financial burden to California and create an unnecessary workload. Proponents say it's essential to pass this bill because sex traffickers need to be held accountable and prosecuted for their crimes. It's not a solution to this issue. I don't think that it's going to end all trafficking, unfortunately, but it is going to make it on the radar and it is going to um, be able to increase the amount of prosecutions. The proposed revenues will be used for victim services as well as educating law enforcement on how to identify and handle sex trafficking situations. Californians have the opportunity to alter corporate tax rates on the November ballot. Proposition 39 deals with multi-state businesses or companies who have offices outside of California. Right now, the tax code has businesses choosing between allowing California to tax just in-state sales or tax property, employees, and in-state sales. The latter method benefits businesses with most of their infrastructure outside of California because their sales are taxed at a lower rate. Prop 39 takes this three-factor option away from businesses. The intent of the regulation is to not allow this loophole where you can have 99% you know, of your business operating in California but a small sales force and millions of dollars of sales being rooted through that sales force in another state just to avoid the tax. But you may have other firms that have, are legitimately operating in other states 
and then happen to use that tax loophole to track their revenues through that other state, they may actually shut down operations in California and move the whole firm. Critics also point out that the proposition says the expected increase in revenues will be directed towards clean energy funds. The sponsor of this prop is the co-chair of Californians for Clean Energy and Jobs, a group that would directly benefit from the passage of Prop 39. The voter registration deadline has passed and the number of students who registered through an ASI voter drive is out. According to ASI student government, 1,500 students registered through the voter drive that went until this past Monday. The voter drive on campus was part of a bigger initiative being pushed by the California State Student Association. According to the CSSA's Facebook page, student leaders all across CSU campuses registered over 31,000 students. President Obama and Governor Romney met for the final debate of the campaign this week. CPTV reporter David Aguilar shows us the highlights of this week's debate. With only 11 days until the general election, Obama and Romney met at Lane University in Florida for what was the final debate of this campaign. Cal Poly students gathered in the University Union to watch President Obama and Governor Romney discuss foreign policy issues. Cal Poly student Elena Reynolds shared her disappointment with President Obama's demeanor throughout the debate. One of the things that I did find um, a little irritating uh, on the President's part was just a lot of sarcasm and I felt like it was very one key topic discussed was the military and how the nation should spend on it. Romney was first to criticize the president's policy on military spending. We need a strong economy. We need to have as well a strong military. Our military is second to none in the world. We're blessed with terrific soldiers and extraordinary technology and intelligence. But the idea of a trillion dollars in cuts through sequestration and budget cuts to the military would change that. But Obama quickly criticized Romney for his lack of military knowledge. I think Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. Throughout the discussion, Romney tried to outline his plan for America's role in the Middle East. We should be playing the leadership role there, not on the ground with military. And President Obama jumped on the opportunity to criticize Romney for his frequent changes in Middle East policy. On a whole range of issues, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's Afghanistan, whether it's Iraq, whether it's now uh, Iran, you've been all over the map. The debate lasted 90 minutes and was moderated by Bob Schieffer of CBS. As the debate concluded, Cal Poly students like Dylan Hardy commented on who they believe won the debate. I'd have to say Obama won this debate. I am a Obama supporter, but I believe Obama won because he had what I'm going to call it the home court advantage. CPTV, David Aguilar. A post-debate poll conducted by CNN and ORC found that 48% of those who watched believe President Obama won the debate. Well, that wraps up our political coverage for this week. Next week, we'll have our final coverage of California propositions, as well as a look at San Luis Obispo's mayoral race. Candidates Steve Barish, Donald Hendrick, and incumbent Jan Marks will be answering questions from students about their platforms and how they plan to run the city for the next four years if they are elected. The forum will be held Tuesday at 11 a.m. in the UU Plaza. CPTV will be streaming the forum online at mustangdaily.net. You can also tune in on election night for our live, full coverage of national, statewide, and local elections. You'll be able to find us at mustangdaily.net slash cptv. Our reporter from the Mustang Daily had some trouble with CSU headquarters, all over 20 cents. While working on a story about professors campaigning for Prop 30 in the classroom, Sean McMinn encountered some roadblocks. He was not able to get a copy of an email sent out by CSU Chancellor Charles Reed to all 23 CSU campus presidents. Sean was told that he would have to pay 20 cents to have the email sent to him or he could drive to the CSU headquarters in Long Beach to see the document in person, 200 miles away from Cal Poly. The CSU, the CSU said it was not their policy to release the information under the California Public Records Act. Emails sent by the Chancellor are open to the public. Brian De Los Santos contact a reporter or an editor down in the Long Beach State uh, Daily 49er newspaper to see if they would go give them a quarter in person to pay for it. And they said they would. And so we called back to CSU and they said, well, you know, thank you, but uh, we can't take a quarter here because we don't have any cash registers in the building. 
Sutton was able to get a copy of the email from the president of the Cal Poly chapter of the California Faculty Association, Glenn Thorncroft, who said he was shocked to hear that a student reporter would have so much trouble getting an email that was sent to all the campus presidents. Hundreds of Cal Poly students will volunteer throughout Slow County tomorrow for National Make a Difference Day. We found out where volunteers will be donating their time tomorrow. Saturday is National Make a Difference Day and Cal Poly students are getting involved. Make a Difference Day is a national day of service. It takes place on a Saturday in October every year and goes on all over the country. Record numbers of Cal Poly students are participating in Make a Difference Day. So last year we had over 600 volunteers. This year we have over 1,000 participants signed up. The Center for Community Engagement at Cal Poly co-sponsors the event with United Way of San Luis Obispo County to place volunteers at over 25 different nonprofit agencies throughout the county. Some of the agencies participants will volunteer at include Transitions Mental Health Association at Growing Grounds, the Food Bank at Grace Church, and the Aid Support Network at United Methodist Church. A, a very, very large percentage of our volunteers come from Cal Poly. Many students will head out of SLO to volunteer their time. We're going to be all the way in Paso and all the way in the Pomo and Rio Grande, and so we're all across the county, and it's great to see big groups of people helping out. There will be a free kickoff breakfast for volunteers in Chumash at 9 a.m. And if you're volunteering tomorrow, you'll get your free Make a Difference Day t-shirt and your agency assignment during kickoff. Coming up next on CPTV, we'll have your weekend weather update. A new fraternity is coming to Cal Poly. And we'll take a look at the fine increases over Halloween weekend. Welcome back to CPTV. We've had such gorgeous weather. It was pretty good, and we also had an earthquake, which I missed. Yeah, I missed too. I missed it too. Well, weather reporter Alice Terz is in the studio with today. Alice, what can you tell us about that earthquake? Hey, guys. Christina and Armando, thank you. Well, being from, from Southern California, earthquakes are no big deal for me, but in San Luis Obispo, I guess they're like the biggest thing. So, But on Saturday, San Luis Obispo experienced a 5.3 magnitude earthquake. It was followed by at least four aftershocks, and thankfully there were, there were no reports of injuries. But going back to the weather, you can expect the warm weather that has um, normally been following the rainy period. During the week, you can expect clear skies day and night because of all the wind we've been having. Our highest will be on Sunday with an 87, but things will cool down to Wednesday to around 71 degrees. Now let's go to our weather shot. Here's Dexter Lawn. A lot of uh, Cal Poly students, like a lot of art students, I know personally, I choose to hang out there during the day when they're off of classes. Cal Poly volleyball team also plays there. Um, I personally like to hang out there too, just because a lot of booths go on and stuff like that during the week. It's really cool to see other activities going on. And here's a shot of Carpenter and Hathaway during the morning. It's pretty, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice day, uh, day out there yesterday. And then here's our five-day forecast. On Friday, there's, we're going to have a high of 82 and a low of 51. Saturday, Saturday during the day, it's going to get up to 85 degrees and a low of 49. And then on Sunday, it's going to get to 87 to 48. Monday, it's going to be 80 and down to 50. And then finally, on Tuesday, when things will be starting to cool off, it's going to be down to 74 and then all the way down to 52 during the evenings. So it seems like pretty good weather you know, for the week. I kind of like during all the warm weather personally, so I don't know about you two, but. Thanks, Alice. Yeah, such great warm weather. Well, I'm going to go backpacking to Big Sur, so let's hope it's, uh, it stays nice out there. That'll be really nice. Kappa Sigma Fraternity will get a second chance on the Cal Poly campus starting next quarter. The fraternity was formally invited to join Greek Life by the campus and the Inner Fraternity Council on October 18th. Jacob Stewart is an original founding father of Kappa Sigma. He says the next step to find si is to find 60 members who will be considered the next founding fathers of the house. Stewart says that while the fraternity was disassociated from Cal Poly in the early 2000s due to a violation on the alcohol policy, the new group hopes to refute some Greek life stereotypes at Cal Poly. And I feel like this is something big. This is bringing an organization of 100,000 people plus to Cal Poly. Kappa Sigma is the largest fraternity in the nation, and the new chapter will be participating in Cal Poly Rush of Winter 2012. As Halloween approaches, the San Luis Obispo Police Department is increasing their numbers to make sure students celebrate the holiday safely. Slow PD is teaming up with UPD to send out 
around 20 officers to patrol starting tonight and continuing through Sunday night. Maximum deployment will also be in effect on Wednesday, Halloween night. The police department is also implementing the city's safety enhancement zone ordinance that night, which doubles fines for violations. It is important to know that if you plan to celebrate on Halloween, you could be fined for serving alcohol to anyone under 21, urinating in public, hosting an unruly gathering, or possessing an open container. The doubled fines will range from $700 to $1,000. This ordinance was also in effect for Halloween last year. Does it make things a little calmer than the years past because of the thought of the double fines seem to have an effect as far as at the activity level? So for us, it seemed to be pretty um, successful in reducing the numbers of noise violations and then the other violations that are included during the double fine time. Cal Poly is also concerned about student safety on Halloween. Administration sent out an email on Wednesday encouraging students to take precautions to remain safe. The email gave tips like go out with a group of friends, avoid risky situations, and be aware of your surroundings. A campus leader is running for Miss California USA. CPTV reporter Olivia Bickle tells us who will be representing Cal Poly. Heather Hayes is an active member in Greek life at Cal Poly. She is currently Panhellenic president, a member of Alpha Omicron Pi, and she served as president to the business fraternity Alpha Kappa Psi for the past two years. Now, Hayes is taking her passion for leadership to the Miss California USA pageant. She will be representing Cal Poly and competing against about 200 other women for the title. The competition judges young women based on character, poise, confidence, and personality. I really like the values of this pageant. It's all about being an independent woman and going out and, you know, finding who you are before you get distracted by other things and really, you know, being goal-oriented and motivated and just kind of a well-rounded woman, which is kind of how I see myself. Hayes says one of her favorite things about participating in pageants is breaking stereotypes. She enjoys the outdoors and fills her free time with activities like hunting, deep sea fishing, and rock climbing. Um, it's nice to be there to kind of break pageant stereotypes. That's one of my favorite things about it. Um, it kind of blows people away sometimes when I tell them, or when I tell them some of the other activities that I'm involved with, and then tell them that I'm a pageant woman. So that's Miss California USA takes place on January 12th and 13th in Pasadena and will be televised around April. For more information, you can visit www.misscaliforniausa.com. CPTV, Olivia Bickle. Hayes plans on having local fundraisers and reaching out to local businesses for sponsorship. Tomorrow night, she's actually having a spaghetti meal. Tickets are $5 and you can find out more information on her Facebook page. Cal Poly Safer put on Run to Remember on Wednesday night. The 5K run is supposed to remember and honor victims of sexual assault such as Chris Smart and other survivors of sexual assault. The event included guest speakers, slam poetry, and a speech by ASI President Katie Morrow. Musty helped count down the start of the race, which looped through campus to the swine unit and back. The race had a larger goal than simply creating awareness about sexual assault. Really focusing on showing our community's commitment to end all violence sexual or, you know, physical, emotional, any of it, the whole gamut. Proceeds from the race benefited SAFER and the SARP Center, both which help sexual assault victims. Cal Poly's Career Services held an international career workshop on Tuesday. The fair ended up having standing room only. It gave students advice on pursuing an international career and internship. They encouraged students to take advantage of their summers by going abroad to study or travel. The workshop also taught the students how to use a new resource called Going Global. This website offers an up-to-date information on international internships and job listings. It also provides work permit regulations, social networking groups, cultural advice, and much more. I think it's important because you gain more experience, you just become a more well-rounded person, I think, um, experiencing different cultures and being in different places. For more information on global career services, contact, contact career services at calpoly.edu. Coming up next on CPTV, we'll find out more about how Cal Poly's football team is making a name for themselves. Volleyball heads into their next match on a two-game win streak. And we'll find out who your Athlete of the Week is.
CPTB. So Cal Poly is having a pretty good week, right? They are. The football team is still undefeated and they're going strong. It's been a long time since football has done this well. It's really exciting for the team. Definitely. And there are a few key upperclassmen who have been stepping up big for the Mustangs. The Cal Poly football team is making a name for themselves with one of the best records in Cal Poly history. After defeating Portland State at Spaniel Stadium 37-25, the Mustangs have a 7-0 record. Senior quarterback Andre Bradas has been one of the top leaders for the Mustangs during their success. His statistics may not stand out in the Big Sky Conference, but as a quarterback, he finds what works best for his team. Statistically, uh, you know, as the numbers in the passing game might not show it, but uh, like you say, every single week you guys can probably see that he's a warrior. And uh, when it comes down to it at the end of the day, uh, the best part about him is he, he wants to win. The Mustangs have been taking it one game at a time in order to be successful. We have the ability to control our destiny. It's in our control. How well are we going to play? And as a coach, all I can do is ask our guys to play emotionally, physically, and mentally to the best of their abilities. And if they do that, good things are probably going to happen for us. It's not just the football team who is enjoying a recent run of victories. The volleyball and men and women's soccer team have been doing well, too. Over the past weekend, all teams have been supporting each other throughout each win. You see the success football is having, both soccers are having. You know, I think, I think they just start to feed off each other, the coaches, the student athletes. I mean, we all live in the same building, the same world. We're all on the same campus and we support each other. So I think when one team has great success, it kind of, kind of fuels the fire for everybody else. CPTV, Brittany Woodard. The Cal Poly women's soccer team is hoping to secure a playoff berth this weekend. The Mustangs' only conference loss came last week at Cal State Fullerton with a 4-0 defeat. The Mustangs' leading scorer is true freshman Elise Krayoff, who has 10 goals so far this season. The blue-green rivalry is back this weekend as the Mustangs face UC Santa Barbara for the Mustangs' last conference game. The historic game takes place Sunday at 2 p.m. in Spano Stadium. The Cal Poly women's volleyball team is riding their first win streak of the season into this weekend's competition. The Mustangs have bounced back after a rocky start to their season. With the wins, the Mustangs improve to 3-18 overall and 2-7 and in, in Big West play. Redshirt junior Megan McConnell was named Big West Conference Player of the Week. Against the Cal State Fullerton Titans, McConnell posted a double-double with 10 kills and a career-high 20 digs. The Mustangs will travel to UC Santa Barbara for a face-off this Saturday at 7 p.m. Cal Poly men's tennis junior Marco Camuso won the USTA Consolation Championship on Monday in Irvine. In the finals, Camuso defeated his opponent in two straight sets, 6-3 and three and 6-4. and four. With the winning Consolation Tournament, Camuso places fifth in the Southwest, Southwest Regional. The Mustangs will compete in the Pacific Tigers Invitational next weekend in Stockton. Well, it's good to see Cal Poly doing very well, but uh, how about them Giants? Well, I'm from SoCal, so I bleed Dodger blue, so yeah. this does make me a little I'm sad. I'm with Jen on that one. <laughs> Must hope to see the Bay on top. There's always next <laughs> season, though. Coming up next on CPTV, see what famous Food Network star will be cooking at the pack. And see what local band took center stage at UU Hour. And how the Multicultural Center is kicking off Black History Month. Welcome back to CPTV. We this have very Polly in our studio to bring you your Pollywood Minute. So tell us what's going on this week, Kelly. We've had a lot of interesting musical and cultural events this week, and there's more coming up for this weekend. Um, so what happens when you mix Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sublime, and Incubus? The result is a band called Louder Space. Louder Space performed on campus Thursday as part of ASI's Concerts in the Plaza. The band claims to be a representation of the lifestyle and culture of the Central Coast. Their music is a combination of alternative, funk, and reggae rock. They began making music in slow about a year ago. If you missed the concert, Louder Space will be performing tomorrow night at Slow Brew. Food Network celebrity Alton Brown is performing at a show at The Pack tonight at 8. The show will be a mix of culinary art, knowledge, and comedy. Brown is known for his award-winning show, Good Eats, which stayed on the Food Network for 14 seasons. He is also the author of several cookbooks and the host of Iron Chef America. 
The show is at the PAC in celebration of the Dairy Products Technology Center's 25th anniversary. Tickets range from $21 to $47. For more information, go to mustangdaily.net slash cptv and click on story links. The Multicultural Center is honoring Black History Month on Monday night. The center showed a documentary. 500 Years Later is an award-winning film about how many Africans and those of African descent still feel the chains of slavery because of crime, drug use, and poor education. The filmmakers advance the idea that Africans must recover their own culture. Filmed in five different continents, the documentary focuses on racism in the United States and other nations as well. The PAC will host ukulele player Jake Shima Bokuro this Saturday. The performance will begin at 7 p.m. and will feature some of his original songs and covers, such as his remake of George Harrison's While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Tickets will cost between $18 and $55. The concert is a dual fundraiser for the Performing Arts Center's outreach program and Guitars in the Classroom. Well, that's it for your Pollywood Minute. Be sure to join us next week for more news in San Luis Obispo Entertainment. Wow, that ukulele performer is so talented. We have, we have really great shows this week and so much going on at Cal Poly. Well, I definitely got to check out the ukulele one and I'm definitely going to go to Autumn Brown today. Yeah, lots of great things going on, so be sure to check it out. We're going to leave you some, with some footage of that amazing ukulele performer, so listen in and enjoy. That's it for CPTV. Be sure to tune in next week, and we'll, you can find our broadcast on Charter Channel 19 and Campus Channel 2. You can also find our broadcast on our new website, www.mustangdaily.net slash cptv. For all of us here in Studio 300, have a great day. <laughs>